Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media, and welcome back to the very next episode of Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 29, and in this episode we're going to be taking on the last and final fourth leg of the Pirate Coliseum. And of course, we're going to be switching Vaporeon back to the front, as I said in one of the previous episodes. I don't remember which one it was, but numbers don't matter, so deal with it. Yeah, all right, let's do this. We have Aron, of course, who is at a pretty decent level. I don't know why I keep saying of course in these episodes. Like, I've been saying it a lot the last couple of days. Of course this, and of course that. And I sound smart because I say of course. Yes, that's really just my consciousness talking. See what I mean? I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, we have Celis. And she's going to start off with Swablu and Torchic. Swablu is normal. Normal. Because that looks like a normal bird, right? Yes, I have a lot of those flying around in the backyard just hanging out. Hey, it's me. I'm a normal blue bird with cotton wings. Yes, it's normal and flying type. I'm continuing that sentence like a badass. And we have Torchic, who is one of the starting Pokemon from... Blah, 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 blah. The Hoenn region, third generation, and it's a pure fire type. So we use Water Pulse on it, and down it went. Third Pokemon of the battle is going to be Natu, Psychic and Flying. So we can use Bite uh, from uh, Mama Vaporeon. Stop using Fury Attack, you evil cotton bird. I'm going to scrape you with my Metal Claws and take away half your HP. That's what you get, yo. Oh, so apparently there's one more Pokemon left to come out in this battle, which I did not know. I thought there was only three, and I thought wrong, and now I'm sad. Natu's pretty fragile. Uh, it's more fragile with physical attacks than it is with special attacks, uh, but Bite is super effective, and it just couldn't handle it. Talo is the last Pokemon of the battle, so basically all bird Pokemon, uh, even though Torchic technically isn't flying type it's still supposedly a little bird chick thing again with the critical hits when it doesn't matter if I got that on the first turn that I used Metal Claw Swablu would have been dead and I would have been happy and I would have felt like there was some purpose to my life Ugh. anywho Kalo is also very fragile and goes down in one hit to water pulse nothing to sweat about this last set really isn't that difficult. Um, honestly, I think that it gets easier as it goes along. I think the first set is the hardest out of all of them, especially with that final battle. Uh, the smelling salt paralysis strategy is actually a decent strategy. Uh, and have that combined with a helping hand and the plus minus abilities of Pluzel and Minin that can be a difficult battle if you're not prepared for it. Mythos, a sphere is the perfect shape. Wouldn't you agree? No, I would not agree. I don't like spheres. That's why I'm not shaped like one. Yo. Meryl and Jigglypuff are the starting Pokemon. Jigglypuff sucks and is a pure normal type. Meryl sucks and is a pure water type, but they're kind of defensive. So you're probably not going to kill both of them in one hit, especially not Meryl. Meryl's the bulkier of the two. Uh, Jigglypuff might go down in one hit to Water Pulse. And it's not that Jigglypuff actually has a lot of defenses, it's just that it has a crap ton of HP, so a lot of times it's able to withstand some attacks that way. And they like to use Rollout, so be careful, because Rollout can get powerful, because its effect is that basically they use it for five turns in a row, and as long as it doesn't miss, it's going to increase in damage. Um, each turn that it's used. And if they use it right after they use Defense Curl, it's going to do double the damage, and it's actually a pretty decent strategy as well. Uh, not necessarily a strategy, but a combination. Um, and it can really do some damage, even though none of them get the uh, same type attack bonus from it, and none of them have very decent um, physical attack power to back that up, it can be dangerous, so be careful. Be careful, I have warned you, you have been warned. Sveal went for the rollout, but didn't use defense curl first. 
I think Merrill was trying to set up that combination, but it didn't quite work out for it because he went and died. Then Sfeel went and died too. So, yes, that is why I win this battle because my opponent is dead. I killed all of your pocket monsters, so deal with it. My spherical Pokemon are perfectly shaped, but this battle's gone less than perfectly. Oh, that kind of sounded like it was supposed to be a joke. And that's why I laughed on the inside. Time for the semi-final, so we're halfway through this last leg here. Which seems like it's going by kind of quickly, but actually it's not, because we're almost six minutes into this video. Whoever wins or loses, let there be no hard feelings, okay? Of course, I will win! That sounds like you already have hard feelings, especially once I whoop your ass and then you don't win. Then, then what are you gonna say? Huh? What are you gonna say then? Turok. He starts off with Corsola and Gulpin. Two of the worst and most annoying Pokemon ever created. Corsola is an interesting water and rock type combination. And uh, Gulpin is just pure crap. I mean, poison. And we're gonna go for the water pulse on Gulpin. I should try to avoid getting poisoned because I don't remember exactly if he knows sludge or poison gas or any of that. I do know that the theme of this battle and the moves that they like to use are moves that attack uh, multiple times. So moves like Fury Attack, Fury Swipes, uh, I believe Corsola has Icicle Spear and Gulpin probably has Bullet Seed. Yeah, Bullet Seed. So you're going to use that on Vaporeon. No, he's stupidly going to use that on Aron and do 1 HP per hit. Just dumb. Corsola is also very annoying in the fact that it knows Light Screen, which you saw it use, so that's going to severely uh, affect our ability to do special damage, which sucks because the only non-special attack that Vaporeon has is Quick Attack, and of course that's not going to do crap to Corsola. It's not going to do crap to really anything. So we're kind of at an impasse with that. I'm going to go for the Metal Claw on Corsola, um, but this thing is just so bulky and it can absorb, yeah, it can absorb a bunch of hits. Uh, so the chances are you're going to have to hit it three or four times before you kill it. Unless you have something that knows grass type moves or electric type moves and you're able to hit it before it uses light screen. In which case you might be able to one shot it. I'm going to go for the bite on Corsola because now Aron is going to be more powerful with the light screen up. Corsola is going to go down. Finally, I feel like that thing has been on the field forever and Vaporeon is going to grow up to level 28, which is just, just dandy. And Aron's also growing good. I can't talk. I say that in every episode, I swear. I trip over my words and then I'm like, oh, I can't talk. But it happens all the time, I swear. Must have speech issues. Aron grew up to level 26. Yeah. And Metal Claw doesn't do as much damage as I thought it was going to do on Apom, considering it doesn't have uh, like the best defenses ever. We're going to use Water Pulse, and even with the Light Screen still up, Apom goes down in one hit to that. Well, not one hit, but you know what I mean. One Water Pulse, I thought it was going to take two. But that's fine by me, I'm not complaining. Doduo, going to use Fury Attack, which is annoying. Apom likes to use Fury Swipes. Blah, blah. Fury Swipes. And the only way these attacks are really dangerous is uh, if they get a couple of crit critical hits. That's pretty much it. That's why uh, moves like Focus Energy with those type of moves uh, can actually be decent because you hit them so many times that you have more chances to get critical hits. And sometimes you can get a couple critical hits in a row or in the same sequence, and you can do a lot of damage that way. But that didn't happen, so we don't have to worry. All right, we're on to the final battle of the Pirate Coliseum. And it's the final leg, so it's the final battle. We are done after this, folks. All done. All right, Researcher Foss. If you can beat me, then you're the champ. However, that possibility doesn't exist. And now we're going to be giving Mr. Foss a reality check. Because not only is it possible... But it is really possible. It is really freaking possible, Foss. Get over it. Man, get over it. 
That reminds me of a song that I'm not going to sing so I don't get in trouble. Carvana and Larvitar are the starting Pokemon. Larvitar is rock and ground type, so Water Pulse is going to knock that thing out in one hit. So I'm not going to have to worry about that. Carvana is kind of like a pest. It has the uh, rough skin ability, so when you make physical contact with it, it inflicts 1 16th uh, of your own HP as damage to you. And it starts off with uh, Focus Energy, and then it'll use moves like Water Pulse and Bite and things like that, and occasionally get critical hits. It is very fragile. Very, very fragile. Unfortunately, Headbutt didn't kill it in one hit, which kind of sucks because we have to get hit with the rough skin twice, but that's okay. It shouldn't be able to do too much damage, uh, even though it uses special attacks. As long as it doesn't use Water Pulse on Aron, we'll be good to go. Hopefully it sticks to Bite. That would be fantastic because Bite's not very effective on Aron. And it goes for the Bite on Aron. As predicted, nothing out of the ordinary there. Ah, I flinched. Crap. Not cool. Anyway, we have Bagon over here. Bagon. We use Headbutt on Carvana again to try to get rid of him. And, oh, I got a critical hit on Bagon, and that's going to kill him in one hit because of it. Normally, that would not knock out a Bagon in one hit. Anyway, since I didn't get the chance to say it before he just died so quickly, wasn't expecting that. He's a pure dragon type, so if you have some ice moves you want to use, that'll knock him out pretty easily. And I don't believe you have any dragon type moves to use at this point. That would be his only other weakness. So just disregard that for now. Okay, so we just have Carvana left, but we just knocked him out. So there you go. That's the end of the battle, and that's the end of the Pirate Coliseum. We're all done. And it flew by so quickly. Actually, I think the last couple of uh, challenges went by slowly, but oh well. Here's your prize money of less than what you earned the first two times. Big meanie. I want to leave this place and never come back. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's check out TM05, which is Roar, which acts like Whirlwind and just basically forces the opponent to switch out. Um, and it usually ends the battle when you're fighting against wild Pokemon, but you don't fight against wild Pokemon here. And I don't know if it actually works against um, the wild Pokemon in Aura. I haven't tried it, but it's not worth it. So why are we even talking about this is beyond me. So I'm just checking everything out here. I have Aron that grew up to level 26, and I got a decent amount of money that I'm going to spend like at least half of at Real Gun Tower, if not almost all of it. Um, because we can buy some TMs and some cool items and battle CDs and whatnot and get all that stuff. But anyway, in the next episode, we're going to move on to Fennec City and Realgum Tower. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for episode number 30. Game on.